So it's early morning and I did my regular scans on Facebook Marketplace for used PC parts. And there was one listing that came up that was very interesting and it was an unstable Ryzen 7 5800X. Now they've put it up for $100 and there's been no takers I think because they've dropped it down to $30. And this is Australian dollars too, by the way. So it'd be about 20 US dollars. So let's go jump in the tech yeah, yeah. mobile and go get this deal. So this is it here. And now the pins look fine to me. I can just put this down here. And then I'll gingerly, I've got the tech yes man in the flesh, so I might be shaking. <laughs> That's all good, dude. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I don't think it's bent pins actually. No, it's not bent pins, Sounds man. like unstable cores actually over time, yeah. Well. Oh, there is something there on the... Is up that... here? No, 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 just, I've noticed just there, what's that about? Oh, yeah, good yeah, call. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll check it out anyway, dude. Like Maybe that's way. just it. I mean, maybe, I'll check it out, dude. I'll, I'll have a check and just see what's, what I it's about. I didn't notice that before. Yeah, it just looks a bit weird. What was essentially going on is... Yeah. I, I had this chip and then it... The memory cache on it failed. I oh, wow. made it. Yeah. They sent this one out. It lasted about 12 months. Started to repeat the same symptoms. Yeah. And I hate troubleshooting stuff uh, like memory caches. Yeah, so yeah. I just didn't even really bother looking at it. I just did a BIOS update reset. It's funny that it's a 5800X because they're the most aggressively clocked Dude. out of the whole like AMD, AM4 line. Yeah, it goes hot. This one yeah. goes really hot. Yeah, it yeah. never, in terms of this specific chip, Mm. Um, the temps were always pretty good, 75 pushing 80 under intense load. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did two Prime 95 tests and one was an individual worker test. It yeah. passed both. And then that was enough for me the second time around to go, I'm not dealing with this again. Do you need to get Windows 10 or Windows 11 activated and don't want to spend $200 or some other exorbitant price? Well, if so, today's video sponsor, VIP SCD Keys, has you covered. For as little as $15 using the coupon code BFTYC, you can get Windows 10 activated. For a little bit more, you can get Windows 11 activated too. Links in the description below to find out more. So we're now back at the Tech Yes studio, and we've actually got two Ryzen CPUs here that we picked up. And the reason for this is Joel, he ended up being an amazing guy, actually got a real good way with words. So maybe perhaps he should be a politician or something like that. <laughs> but he's got here a 5800X. Now, describing the problems to me, he just said it is problematic. He actually had one before this that ended up doing a similar behavior and just becoming unstable. And he said he's tried a few things and it just hasn't worked properly. So what we're gonna do right now is install this in the motherboard and then go through the regular process of perhaps, first of all, trying to lower the clock speeds. And then maybe after that, we can try and even disable cores if it's still unstable and see what the actual problem is. Because I do know from experience, Ryzen 7 5800Xs are one of the most problematic 5000 series AM5 CPUs. And I believe, of course, that's due to the fact that they're the highest clocked cores out of the box. So I believe that would have something to do with it, especially since he's gone through the second one right now. But then besides that's a Ryzen 5 3600, and he knew that I did YouTube, and he decided just, he said to me, look, here's these CPUs, take them for nothing. And I just said, look, man, okay, if I can get this 5800X working, I'm gonna give you some money. So let's find out during this process if we can get this thing stable and working as a normal gaming CPU again. But got a pretty daunting task ahead of us because he did describe that he did try quite a few things already. So there's some really good news. We've cleaned up the CPU pins. We've actually had to slightly bend probably four or five pins back to their original position. And now we've booted up the system just with a basic air cooler because if it's unstable with a basic air cooler, it's gonna be basically unstable regardless. And what we're doing right now is we've made it to the BIOS and we're gonna lock in the XMP profiles. And then we're just gonna restart the system 
and just leave it in the BIOS actually for a good half an hour, come back and see if the system is still responsive because what the BIOS does is it boots up in what's called a non, I believe anyway, a non PBO state. And so it's basically more a basic state for the CPU to run in. And so that'll give us some information if it's still fine at least half an hour later, I think then the CPU is checking out on its base settings. And then perhaps we'll have a CPU that could even work in a non PBO state. But let's uh, leave that going here and just watch the temperature of the CPU and come back in about half an hour's time. So we're coming back now, actually nearly an hour later, and there's some really good news, and that is that the BIOS, the CPU on the BIOS is still working absolutely fine. And so to me, this means that there shouldn't be at least any damaged CPU cores. And so I've seen this in the past where I've actually had a Ryzen with some uh, faulty cores on it. And what I've had to do is disable half the cores. And because what the symptoms was there was you'd get into the BIOS and within like a minute, the whole system would just crash. So that's some really good news on that front. But what we're gonna look at right now is getting to Windows and seeing if like, for instance, it crashes under a Cinebench stress test and find out what exactly is going on here. But I really hope that bending the pins back and just quickly cleaning it down wasn't the solution here because I'd kind of feel guilty for getting a CPU for so cheap. So now this PC has passed the BIOS test, it's time to just run it in default settings. And what we're using here is OCCT stress test. And we're actually testing the whole front end. That's with the CPU, CPU plus memory, and then the memory as well as doing a Linpack test on this. And we're gonna do this for three hours. If somehow it manages to pass this, we will then start gaming on this system and see if we can get it to falter. If it doesn't falter after gaming, then I'm pretty sure this thing is gonna be absolutely fine after we did the spray down and the pins just slightly bending them back. But also, since I do like to make a full video, we'll put the 5800X if this is the case, because it does look like it is going to work absolutely fine. So flash forwarding now, a bit of an update, and I had to go out and do some things, and I came back, and the whole PC had just reset, hard reset, and there was no previous error messages when I tried to reopen OCCT, which means that the thing just essentially switched off. It came into a critical error, and that was, of course, most likely on the CPU side. So what we're doing now is we've gone into the BIOS, and we've gone to the PBO advanced settings, and we're putting in a negative offset with the clocks and dropping it down by 300 megahertz. And then we're gonna rerun this test and just see if it passes the one hour test because we've clearly found out that there is a fault, not in the BIOS, and then there is a fault running OCCT at its default settings with PBO enabled and with 3600 CL16 memory. So we're gonna try and home in on the exact problem here. Hopefully it passes this stress test because then we can start to really find out if it's just silicon degradation, or perhaps it's maybe a CPU that's <laughs> can't run at 4.85 gigahertz, or perhaps it's something else yet again. So we've now just passed the one hour OCCT stress test, and that is some really good news because there is no errors detected. And I'm thinking we could possibly have here one of the best value CPUs you can get off the used market, and that's a $20 Ryzen 7 5750X. Though what we're gonna do right now is test it anyway in its current state with this $10 cooler against the results that we just recently posted with our Ryzen 7 comparison. And that's gonna be like, in two ways, it's gonna give us some numbers on how a CPU like this performs, but also it's gonna be our final stress test through all these different games. So now we've just finished testing this CPU out through five different games at four different resolutions. And there's some really good news, and that is the CPU didn't crash once. So this minus 300 megahertz raw blanket setting here made it so that we were just having a CPU that is now officially stable. However, this new speed of maxing out at 4.55 gigahertz, I believe it is, puts it so that it is technically sometimes a little bit slower than a Ryzen 7 5700X. And I do believe that CPU can boost up to 4.65 gigahertz, at least on the single core side. However, this is where it gets a little bit weird because 
the all core speeds, even though it's minus 300 megahertz on the maximum PBO setting, I do believe the all core speeds can sometimes still remain higher than that of a 5700X. And we're seeing this in some of the games here, especially when we look at a game like Black Ops at 1080p. And we'll start off with these results here, where it did win at 1080p and 1440p and 4K when coupled with the RX 9070 XT. However, when we move over to a game like Counter-Strike 2, which is more single thread dependent, here is where it got a loss at 1080p but then at 1440p and 4K, we did notice that the 0.1% the lows were actually a little bit higher than that of the 5700X. So that PBO sort of blanket max 300 megahertz is showing that to me personally, the CPU has become unstable on a single core, a single thread, trying to boost up to 4.85 gigahertz. I believe that is the problem here, but we'll talk about that after we get through these benchmarks here. With Marvel Rivals, we had a victory at 1080p, but then we had a loss at 1440p and 4K versus the 5700X. And then moving on to a game like Cyberpunk, it was a loss at 1080p, However, it was a win at 1440p and then pretty much a draw at 4K. However, most of these games are practically a draw, even with the 3700X versus say the 5800X 3D, they're gonna be drawing out at 4K because it becomes really graphically intensive at those resolutions. But let's get on to Rift Breaker here, the final game. 1080p win for the 5800X minus 300, but then we go to 1440p and 4K, it's a slight L. Though let's get onto the last graph, which is really interesting because it shows that the power consumption is still the highest among all the five CPUs that we've tested here in the graph today. And during Cyberpunk 1080p, we went up to 118 watt spikage. So the minus 300 megahertz on the PBO is still leaving it so that this 5800X likes to still draw power like it was on its original PBO setting, but it's basically just not getting those speeds for that power consumption. <laughs> so basically what this means is it's still remaining a power hog, but we're not seeing the benefits of this CPU remaining a power hog. Though with all those results out of the way, it's now time to sum up what has happened with this CPU here. And ultimately it's a case of the 5800X being the most aggressive AM4 in terms of clock speeds out of the box that I've seen and I know of, I believe it is. And so this means in my opinion that it's the most susceptible CPU to seeing problems the earliest out of any AM4 CPU for its lifespan on a, a consumer grade rig, whether it's gaming or whether you're doing productivity or anything like that, because that 4.85 gigahertz, it's just not sustainable in the long run. And what we're seeing with this CPU right here on today's bench is that when we take the edge off it, it's then completely stable, which is what I thought it was to begin with because I have seen, and I actually have fixed this in the past for a friend uh, when I was doing a parts hunt one time, I dropped into a friend's house and they said, Brian, my Ryzen 7 5800X is unstable. We took a look at it. We basically shaved off 200 megahertz and that fixed his problem. Uh, this time around, I believe 300 megahertz is a better setting because you just want stability. And that's what I've talked about in the past with a lot of CPUs. Uh, I don't mind losing a few FPS if it means my games are not going to crash. And I think that's the most important thing here today is that we've got a fully functional eight core 16 thread CPU that wasn't fully functional before this. And it's cost us very little, but then it's still giving out really good performance. And so if you've got a Ryzen CPU or you know of a friend or you're trying to help someone out, and they're having stability problems, and especially if they're on an X grade CPU, whether it's a 5600X or a 3800X, or like this, what we got here, a 5800X, you can just go into those PBO settings in the BIOS, and then you can go to the advanced frequency offset there, go to negative, and you can take it down as much as you need. I do recommend starting off with a massive chunk. If you've got stability issues on an AM4 CPU, I do recommend starting off with a big chunk first just to test if this is the actual problem or not. And as we saw here, I'm happy with the minus 300 that we've put in here because we've got a completely stable CPU. Sure, I can try and go to minus 200 and see if we can push it a little bit more. But if I'm gonna flip this in a gaming rig, for instance, I've got to guarantee it for over a year. 
And in this case, I'd probably guarantee it for even longer on the CPU just because I don't want the person having any problems. And also on top of that, I believe this CPU will last the mile with a more safer setting. Though the best part about all this is we've saved a CPU that a lot of people would otherwise think is faulty and given it a new life and a new purpose and essentially saved it from becoming e-waste. But also on that note, it's a great trick for helping people who say are on a budget, they don't wanna go out and buy a new CPU and they fear that their CPU is perhaps faulty, it's out of warranty, but then they can try this and see if it fixes their problem. So hopefully today's video has entertained as well as helped you out. If it did, be sure to hit that like button and also let us know in the comments section below if you've had any hiccups with AM4 CPUs and what was the problem? Did you fix it? And if you fixed it, how so? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And with that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. And yeah, I did get a fresh haircut in between the intro and the outro. <laughs>